Well, here now to talk about all this is Charles Marino, former Secret Service Supervisory Special Agent. He's also a former Homeland Security Advisor and clinical, psych and clinical psychologist, Dr. Catherine Kuhlman, who specializes in police and public safety psychology. Thanks both for joining us. Thank you. Catherine, let me start with you, if I may. Um, we are seeing now, even the, most of the media has to admit it, these surging crime in many American cities. Um, what, what's, what, what's your view about what's behind it? No, I think that right now there's just this perfect storm that's occurring. With the COVID restrictions starting to lift, you're seeing people name? that are more out and about. You're also seeing What's the other guys you know, people who maybe had plans for targeted attacks. These plans have lied dormant for quite a bit. We're seeing staffing shortages, officers that are retiring at, at record rates, low morale among departments. And all of this together really just creates this environment that's ripe for criminals. Charles Marino, you've, you've, you've worked, you've seen how law enforcement works close up. A lot of people, um, understandably, are very concerned about police morale. We've seen attacks on the police in the last year, physical attacks, but also political attacks from political leaders basically blaming uh, police, claiming that you know, police are responsible for uh, widespread police brutality. What effect is that having on the morale of law enforcement officers and their ability to do their job? Yeah, it's having a big time effect, Jerry. I mean, listen, this was all predictable. The defund movement, um, all the other rhetoric that's coming from Democratic leadership, especially in the major cities across the United States. I mean, it was so predictable that you can come to no other outcome than to just basically say that these Democratic leaders don't care that violent crime is going up in their cities. And that's a shame. It's embarrassing for this company. But how long can you beat up on 800,000 men and women of law enforcement in this country uh, and constrain them from doing their jobs before we see an impact? We knew what the outcomes was going to be here. We were going to see our, our law enforcement institutions and our civilized society deteriorate. Uh Dr. Kuhlman, uh, we've seen, uh, as Charles says, many, many, uh, you know, the impact on police officers has been extraordinary, uh, law enforcement officers. The impact on, you know, it's a stressful job at the best of times. We've seen so many of them leave the profession, leave, leave, the, sh leave the forces in the last year um, because of, precisely because of these pressures and the way they're being treated. Uh, what, what, can, what can be done to, to actually reassure our frontline law enforcement officers that they actually do have our support? What can we do to, to actually to, to shore up their, their confidence and their ability to do the job? Well, I think we need to remind them that the reality is, is that 70 plus percent of Americans really support the police. And these 70 plus percent Americans need to stand up and say so. You know, we, we have a tendency to remain silent and not show this support. But, you know, going up and thanking an officer can truly make their day. And I think there's this really small group that's just been incredibly loud. And they're the ones that are affecting all of this change, this defund the police, police reform. Now they're calling it reimagining public safety. You know, and so we really need to get in at the local levels with our city councils, with our mayors, and make the changes right there and, and make our voices heard that we don't want these changes in policing. Ultimately, the way that things are going right now with officers being stripped of their autonomy and decision making, like you mentioned in Atlanta, not being able to, to, to go on a pursuit uh, unless various conditions are met, that ultimately harms the rest of us. And Charles Marino, you must be hearing from officers, I'm sure, about the, the pressures that they're under, the impact they're under. They're under. What, what, what can you tell us about what effect this is having on them? Yeah, you know, it, it's not just the stress at work, but this also carries over when they go home, when they deal with their own families. And you know what? While they're on duty, the last thing that you want is a police officer that feels like they're overstretched. That they're, that they're being micromanaged, that any move they make could either get them fired or even put them in jail. This is not the place where you want these officers acting that way. It, it's a detriment to the way they perform. And, you know, as far as the public safety in communities, it's time really in these cities that the American public holds these politicians that are setting the tone for these police departments accountable. This is the only way they listen, through votes and money. 
So you've got to make your voices heard as you vote. If these politicians are not carrying out their number one responsibility, which is the safety and security of their citizens. Charles, and the know. other thing is, uh, Charles, I've got to cut also, you off. I'm sorry, Charles, yeah. to cut you off. I've got to, got to cut you off there. We've got to take a break. But thanks very much to you and to Dr. Catherine Coleman for a fascinating look at that.